Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Constable Noel Maitland's bail application denied. Costas calls for the instilling of moral values in a bid to fight crime scourge. And later in sports, Pakistan's home series against West Indies early next year likely to be postponed. I'm Kelisha Williams and here are the details. Constable Noel Maitland, who is charged with the murder of his girlfriend, Donnelly Donaldson, was this morning denied bail when he appeared in the home circuit court. Justice Vinette Graham Allen, who is presiding over the case, denied the application on the basis that the court is satisfied that there are substantial grounds for believing that Constable Maitland would fail to surrender to custody and that he will interfere with witnesses. Maitland was arrested on July 27 following the disappearance of 24-year-old Donaldson, who was last seen at his New Kingston apartment on July 11. She was reported missing on July 13. He was subsequently charged with murder after investigators reported that they had collected forensic evidence in the apartment pointing to her death. Maitland is to return to court on February 9, 2023 for a plea and a case management hearing. Meanwhile, relatives and friends of Donnelly Donaldson who were at court reacted to the bail denial. The placard-bearing group broke out in song, indicating their approval of the judge's ruling. Since Donnelly went missing in July, they have been very vocal, staging protests demanding answers. Donnelly's mother, Sophia Lugg, says the ruling has restored her faith in the justice system. Hard for me. Yes, I know. I have no doubt that justice is going to be served But what really have me feeling this sad? The fact that I still have no closure where my daughter is. To other news now, as the island continues to be rocked by crime and violence, there's a call for the moral values of the days gone by to be instilled in the children of today. It comes as the police say majority of the crimes island-wide are being committed by young people. O'Shane Masters has the details. Over 1,170 murders have been committed in the island up to October 1 an increase of 8% compared to the corresponding period in 2021, a concern for members of the security forces. But of even greater concern to the JCF are the perpetrators of the gruesome attacks, young people. It's why Custis of Trelawney, Hugh Gentles, is calling for the return of earlier years where moral values were instilled in children. His comment comes on the heels of four children ages 15 to 17 years being found at a party with gangsters last weekend in the parish. We need to go back to the values that we had as a society years ago of discipline, of, of courtesy. These are some of the values that we have lost, I think, a lot of it in the society. But I would hasten to add that in all of this gloom, it is a minority that is creating all of this mayhem. The vast majority of, Jama are, of Jamaicans are law-abiding, peaceful people and decent human beings. He's also calling for parents to provide greater oversight of their wards, warning that the government will have to step in if there is no parental guidance. In the meantime, he says the justices of the peace in the parish have been given a charge to help in ridding the parish of crime and criminal elements. Peace have alerted all of them to the fact that they must assist the police in whatever way they can. And as soon as there are issues in the parish, they are to alert the police to what's going on. The police have said that their information suggests that several gangs, some of which are former rivals, were present at the illegal party in Hague settlement. This has drawn their focus to a possible shift in gang alliances and arrangements. The police high command says more resources will be deployed to deal with gang activity in Trelawney. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. 
with gang violence threatening citizens in Rose Gardens of the Rose, Rose Gardens area of Central Kingston, the Member of Parliament is urging the police to quickly intervene. MP Donovan Williams brought the matter to Parliament on Tuesday during the State of the Constituency debate. We have had several shootings in that area. We are asking that priority attention be given to that area and if possible, the extension of the Zozo there. It's a relatively small area, but it would appear that there is a bit of gang feud in the space. And unless the security forces take full control of it, it will continue unabated. The law-abiding citizens of Spoilers, Rose Gardens, I'm just saying that so we can identify because some of us call it by that name, need to be able to live in their community in peace. A zone of special operations is ongoing in the nearby community of Parade Gardens. But for the Allman Town area, car theft is on the increase. We do have a little problem there with car stealing. There's a ring operating there, and I'm asking the police to look into that matter and break up that ring. We have not been spared sporadic flare-ups on the eastern side of the constituency. But I must say that the Eastern Kingston Police Division has been proactive in keeping the violence from raising its ugly head again. Is the future of nursing in Jamaica under threat? At least one expert believes more should be done to address poor working conditions, migration and low wages within the industry. But as we hear in this report, Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says change is coming. Day one of the Caribbean Nurses Association's biennial meeting and conference in St. Anne, a time to revisit some of the issues plaguing the sector, from poor working conditions and low wages to burnout. Shout for what you want, whether it is working conditions, whether it is more resources, shout for what you want. Don't let anybody tell you that money is not important, because it is. As frontline healthcare workers, concurrently responding to the regular call of duty, and also addressing health threats, it is important to remember self-care. There's a common saying, you cannot pour from an empty cup. Dr. Emily Dacubo is the director of the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Jamaica Caribbean and Regional Program. She outlined how important the well-being of nurses is in effectively delivering health care. But in recent times, nurses in the region have been leaving in droves in pursuit of jobs overseas. There are more than 5 million nurses working in various health aspects of the health sector in the region of the Americas, with Latin America and the Caribbean accounting for approximately 2 million. It is necessary that countries in the Caribbean have adequate distribution of this core public health group in order to meet the needs of the region's 40 million people, and those numbers are based on estimates from the United Nations. So how do we retain nurses in the region? Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton, who was also at the conference, had this to say. We are saying, listen, how do we train to expand the cadre of nurses or persons within the nursing fraternity, the different levels? How do we negotiate and leverage those who are recruiting nurses, for example, to go abroad? The US, the big player, Canada, UK, how do we create joint arrangements that allows us as a nurse to provide greater flexibility for work? For instance, flexi contracts for nurses. This, he says, would expose nurses to many more opportunities and help address the migration issue in the region. I can't I go to the U.S. and work for five months and come back to Jamaica and enjoy seven months. Some people may not think about some of those things. Prime Minister Andrew Holness was emotional as he committed to leaving behind a good legacy in a country where transparency in government has been an issue. Addressing a handing over of new houses in St. Catherine on Wednesday, he stressed the steps being taken to ensure a transparent and fair process to provide affordable housing to low-income groups. Krista Campbell has that story. My job as your Prime Minister, I've passed the stage of trying to, you know, are needing to win political popularity and favor. It doesn't matter to me anymore. 
I have to start to think about legacy. What will Jamaica be? Will it be the same as I came and saw it? I can't let Jamaica be the same as I came and saw it. An emotional Prime Minister Andrew Holness as he handed over the keys to 30 new housing units at the Roseneath scheme in Old Harbour St. Catherine. In total, 140 detached two-bedroom units will be built at the location at a cost of $12.5 million each. There are hot water heaters for the bathroom. Uh, there are water tanks. There's a water pump. So there is a reserve of water. 39% uh, of the beneficiaries here are earning minimum wage or just over. And 43% are earning 30,000 per week to 42,000 per week. And I think that's, that's a, a fairly even distribution of access to housing based upon income levels. The Prime Minister again stressing that there is no political interference in the selection process for the beneficiaries. You know, people come to me every day, boss, I see a scheme, I go over the, make me get one. And I am very clear to them, I have absolutely po have no powers in determining who gets a house that the NHD is putting on the market. I'm very clear with that. And amidst criticisms of limited benefits for some persons with disabilities under the new housing policy, the Prime Minister pointed to former police constable Owen Graham, whose new house has been retrofitted to improve access at no extra cost to him. The modifications made include the installation of grab bars in the bathroom, the installation of access ramps, a customized shower design, a customized kitchen cupboards, and a change to the internal walls from drywall to reinforced concrete walls to facilitate the installation of relevant accessories. Krista Campbell, TBJ News. The Southwest St. Catherine Member of Parliament has threatened to halt work on a new housing scheme in Colbeck Castle if the National Housing Trust, the NHD, does not address a long-standing issue to repair a bridge in the community. He raised the issue at the handing over ceremony for 30 out of 140 detached units at the Roseneath Housing Scheme in the constituency on Wednesday. The Housing Trust will not have an entrance to Colbeck Castle through the Bordless Agricultural Station, you will not enter through the Banana Research Station, you will not enter through Northern Colby Castle to allow the student going to that school to be raped and attacked by people in those dark corners. You will use the original entrance. You will have to build, build rebuild that bridge to take you into the, the development. The build, bridge must be rebuilt. Under that, without that being done, Colbeck Castle Development will not go forward. For his part, Prime Minister Andrew Holness assured the MP and residents that steps were already being taken to resolve the matter. I actually had a meeting with the NHD team looking at the alternatives. Uh, there are always issues on both sides that we have to consider. And... Uh, the safety of the students are all, you know, we always treat human safety as, as paramount. Uh, and so we'll take a look at what the Member of Parliament has suggested. We now go to Cody and Barrett with the Business Minute. In the world of business, the ability of receiver, Wilfred Bangalore, to advance the sale of assets of bankrupt Mystic Mountain Limited MML operators of the Mystic Mountain attraction hinge on the outcome of the hearing of the injunction application in the commercial division of the Supreme Court on Friday. This follows the granting of a temporary injunction on September 14, barring the receiver from proceeding with the planned sale of the assets to a selected preferred bidder who has not been named. Creditor Sky High Holdings Limited will respond to Karibukai's arguments and seek to convince the judge to dismiss the application and allow the sale to proceed. In business internationally, the turmoil in UK financial markets
markets has intensified after the Bank of England insisted its emergency bond buying scheme would come to an end this week. The cost of government borrowing over 10 years briefly surged to its highest level since 2008 as investors demanded higher returns led to the UK. The bank has been buying government bonds to prevent a sell-off which could put some pension schemes at risk. That's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. It's now time for the top regional and international stories. Here's Sandy Williams. Region. The director of the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, Dr. Carissa Etienne, says the cholera outbreak in Haiti, a steady increase in monkeypox cases, ongoing COVID-19 infections, and low polio vaccination rates heightened the need for health emergency preparedness in the region of the Americas. Regarding the monkeypox virus, Dr. Etienne says the Americas has now reported over 45,000 cases, accounting for 63% of the global total. Dr. Etienne also made a renewed call for countries to act on polio by increasing vaccination coverage and surveillance. She said four countries in the region, Brazil, the Dominican Republic, Haiti, and Peru, are at very high risk of polio transmission, with another eight being considered high risk. On the international scene, India's Supreme Court has delivered a split decision on a hijab ban in classrooms in the southern state of Karnataka. A lawyer representing one of the petitioners described it as a divergence of opinion. The case stems from petitions filed by Muslim students denied entry to classrooms in multiple state-run schools and colleges in Karnataka since January. A group of six Muslim students staged a peaceful demonstration outside their school for the right to wear the garment. This prompted rival protests from right-wing Hindus deepening religious tensions in the state. The matter has now been referred to the Chief Justice of India, with a larger bench expected to be formed. But the current Chief Justice retires next month, and it is unknown whether he will address the matter before that happens. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Sandy Williams. And that's the Midday News. I'm Kelly Show Williams. Join us at 7 for Primetime News. On behalf of the news, sports, and production teams, good afternoon.